Canada is a large market and I have to give them a lot of credit. The regulators in Canada have been very thoughtful and forward thinking about the potential for crypto. They've started to work very proactively with us and other crypto companies to ensure a clear regulatory framework is emerging. And that's gotten us very excited about investing more in the region. So it's really exciting today. I mean, we're, we're expanding our offerings in Canada. We've got um, a deeper payment integration with Interact. We've got our pre-registration uh, undertaking signed with, with the regulator, which is an important step. And then we've made a commitment in terms of hiring over 200 people or about 200 people um, in Canada, a new country manager, uh, Lucas Matheson. So we're investing in, in hiring a number of really talented people in the region as well. It seems like the regulatory process stands in stark contrast to what's going on in the United States. When you were hit with that lawsuit by the SEC, did anything change with respect to the line of questions, the interest, or where you are in the undertaking process? No, I mean, we've been pursuing those conversations with separate tracks, just like we are in various countries around the world. But you're correct. I mean, there has been a stark contrast. You know, in the U.S., the SEC has taken a regulation by enforcement approach instead of engaging with the industry to create rulemaking as, as they should. And we feel very confident in our case there, which is now going through the court system. I think it'll be a landmark case. And a lot of people in the crypto space have really uh, thanked us and thanked me personally um, with amicus briefs and just personal notes saying, thank you for standing up for the industry, making sure that the law is followed. We also need to make sure that we get new legislation passed in the US uh, so we don't see that type of activity from the regulator in the future. But in Canada, the story has been totally different. Uh, we've had very productive conversations with the regulator. They're engaging very thoughtfully in a rulemaking process um, with us. And that pre-registration undertaking that we've now signed is an incredibly positive step in the right direction. So I can't, I can't say enough good things about the Canadian regulators. Is, is this happening in part because our regulatory process is not divided between commodity regulation and securities regulation? Or is there something else about the Canadian framework that is being developed that you think could ultimately apply to the United States? You know, I think that's a really important point. In the U.S., as you pointed out, we do have different financial service regulators on the commodities and securities side. What that's caused, unfortunately, is a, a battle, a turf war. You know, it, it's essentially created political behavior at the regulator um, level at the very top of those agencies. And that's not helping anybody in the U.S. Um, in most of the other markets that we interact with, there's just one financial service regulator for both commodities and securities. And the debates about which type of crypto asset is one or the other is, is more of an... Um, it's a wonky point that intellectually could be interesting, but it's not actually the focus of creating sensible regulation that protects consumers and innovation. In that vein, then, oh, did what happened with the SEC, and I know that it's still ongoing, spook off any institutional discussions that you had been having, uh, particularly here in Canada? I mean, our Canadian financial institutions are known for being risk averse. Um, have they wanted to stay away from doing business or partnerships with Coinbase until this is resolved? Well, I would say just as a general comment on institutional investors, yes, they, they are often looking for regulatory clarity. The good news is that uh, we're starting to see that emerge in Canada. Uh, the pre-registration undertaking that we just signed was a great step, again, in that direction. Um, I, I would say, actually, the, the misstep in the United States by the SEC has created an opportunity for other regions. And we've seen that now um, in Canada, where they're stepping in to embrace this, this really important technology. We're seeing it in the UK, we're seeing it in UAE, we're seeing it in Singapore. So uh, the US is actually surprisingly a bit of an outlier here. And I have to say, it's, it's not the entire US, it's really just uh, one or two people that are outliers. Most of the folks I speak with in government in the US, they understand the potential of this technology as well. So the US system will correct on its own time, but. In the meantime, we're excited to invest more in Canada in regions where regulatory clarity is already starting to emerge. You mentioned the, the regulatory landscape. Uh, the OSC and others did require registration, and exchanges were faced with a choice. They could either comply or they could leave. Binance is one of those that chose to leave. There's been other instances where a Coinbase has taken a different approach or a different path from Binance. Would you characterize as Binance is sort of a bad actor in crypto? Well, I don't want to speak about any other companies in the space. I'll leave that for others to decide. But what I can say is about Coinbase, you know, we've been committed since the earliest days of this company, which, you know, we've, we've been around since 2012, more than 10 years now. 
even even back in 2012, we decided that we wanted to, this to be a regulated and trusted and safe institution and, and industry. And we actually leaned into regulation and compliance even before it was clear. You know, you think we, we think it might be unclear now in some areas. It was much more unclear back then, I can, I can reassure you. So I think the culture of Coinbase has really been a differentiator for us on the compliance front. And if we can make crypto trusted and easy to use by working with regulators, by having really incredible cybersecurity practices by, you know, we became a listed company in the US, which required us to meet the highest levels of accounting standards. So, you know, you don't have to take our word for it. We have a big four accounting firm kind of auditing our books. These are things that we've helped do to help advance the industry um, in the right direction. And I think customers recognize that. And it's, it's there's been a flight to quality in, in this past year where it's benefited Coinbase. I know that you don't want to talk uh, overtly about Binance, but a lot of analysts bring it up when talking about Coinbase just because of its sheer size and scale, and that if it runs into trouble, it casts a pall on the whole sector, and ultimately that will affect you. Yeah, well, you know, we actually, I mean, we saw this happen um, last year, of course, with FTX as well, and, you know, it's really unfortunate in traditional financial services, sometimes we see bad actors, you know, the classic ones, Bernie Madoff, et cetera, um, Enron. And it seems that in this, this new financial system, we're also seeing some bad actors come on the scene. Um, again, I try not to focus too much on that. I try to just focus on what we can control at Coinbase. We try to, we try to be trusted. We try to make the easiest to use products to sort of de demystify this technology so more people can benefit from it. We try to surround ourselves with good governance, um, the highest compliance standards. And so, you know, that's, I, I believe in focusing on what we can control. And um, I know the technology potential here is there. It's here to, 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 in a way that can actually benefit people. And so I'm not going to let a few bad actors kind of derail us from our broader mission. Is part of this international push because you are facing sort of falling revenues, there's reports that perhaps even market share domestically in the U.S. is being taken by the likes of Robinhood. Is that kind of increasing the impetus to look outside the U.S. for growth opportunities in addition to kind of what you're going through on the regulatory front? Yeah, well, I, I would disagree with the premise there a little bit. I think in the U.S. in Q1 and Q2 in our earnings, we reported positive adjusted EBITDA. So I think we really um, have, have shown really good financial health there. You know, we have over $5 billion on the balance sheet. Um, actually, our simple trading product grew in share in Q2. Uh, we shared that in our earnings as well. Now, I mean, just broadly, uh, your question, you know, about other services integrating crypto, we want more companies out there to integrate crypto, even even some that are competitive or semi-competitive. Our, our vision here is that we believe crypto is the most important technology to update the financial system globally. The financial system is in major need of an update, by the way. If you ask most Canadians and, and others, um, you know, they say the fees are sometimes high, payments take too long, especially internationally. It's banking services are not equally distributed to people all over the world. And so I think crypto is an important technology, the most important technology to update that financial system globally. So those are the things we, to, to achieve that mission, we need crypto to be integrated into every aspect of the traditional financial system and new fintechs around the world. And so we're trying to make that easier. We don't see it as a zero sum game. What does that update to the financial system look like? Because many people view it as just an outright disruptor, if only it would gain traction. And ultimately, that's the ultimate uh, criticism of crypto. It is still nothing but a vehicle for speculation. Yeah, well, I would say I disagree with that. I, the early days of crypto certainly had lots of speculation, and there's still some of that happening today. But I'd say that view is probably four to five years out of date. We, what we've seen in the last four to five years is that people have started to use crypto for a variety of things. Um, they've started to use it for things like stable coins, payments, NFTs, which are more like artwork, new ways for creators to get paid. Um, things like DeFi have created new, uh, more efficient um, decentralized protocols for financial services, things like borrowing and lending. And then there's a lot of other things on the horizon as well. New forms of decentralized identity, uh, social media, um, you know, we're even, we even launched our own kind of layer two solution called BASE, which is helping crypto scale to the next level, kind of similar to how the internet went from dial up to broadband. And we've had over a hundred companies, startups, um, actually engage and build on top of that platform. So we're seeing a lot of developer activity building these next generation of applications. You know, Coinbase Ventures has even um, invested in, in eight different startups in Canada alone 
that are building uh, new applications on top of blockchains. So I think the future is bright. Uh, crypto is going to be much more than just a speculative asset class, although trading is certainly a big use case. And we're going to see it touch all aspects of financial services and non-financial service use cases. That's really Web3, uh, the next generation of the Internet. On the financial product side, Canada, of course, has had Bitcoin ETFs. We're still waiting to see whether the SEC will green light those mm -hmm. in the United States. I mean, given the uh, tenor and flavor of the SEC these days, are you optimistic that A, one would be green lit and B, what could that mean to your business if people could start trading crypto in their traditional portfolios? Yeah, so I am optimistic that one of the ETFs uh, will get approved, and I hope that something similar happens in Canada as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the the head of the SEC may not be may not like crypto or want to approve them, but you know, the U.S. government um, has made it clear that they want to have a clear path for these things to exist. There's no there's no legal reason that's blocking it, and I think um, one way or another, <laughs> we're going to get these approved in the U.S. And I don't see it as really competitive to Coinbase. In fact, again, back to my prior comment, we want crypto to be integrated into more and more of the economy. ETFs will open up new uh, capital, you know, certain people who don't have access maybe to traditional ways of investing or they don't feel comfortable, their LP agreements. We could see ETFs bring in a lot of fresh capital into crypto. So we're, we're certainly pro ETF. And Coinbase has been named as the custodian in many of these ETF applications, which I think is a great... Um, mm -hmm representation of our trust we've created in the ecosystem. And of course, they've been approved here uh, in Canada, to your point about how Canada's regulatory process has been further along. Uh, a final question. Uh, again, I, I hate to go back to the legal battle, but how much are you willing to spend on this? Have you attached a dollar figure? And are you getting support? You mentioned those amicus briefs from professors, from you know the Blockchain Association, from big prominent VC funds. Are they putting dollars behind this because it could set precedent? Yeah, well, we haven't shared an exact figure of the legal cost, but as I mentioned earlier, you can see in our public financials that you know, we have over $5 billion on the balance sheet. We were EBITDA positive in Q1 and Q2. So I'm not worried about the financial cost of the, of the litigation. Uh, what I'm most worried about is, you know, as a citizen of the United States, how much damage it could be doing to the country. I think Coinbase will be fine. Um, I'm more worried about the other startups in the space, the chilling effect, um, but really, you know, America stumbling here is the rest of the world's opportunity and Coinbase is a global company. And so we're going to continue to invest in markets where clarity is emerging, including Canada. And I think um, it's their opportunity to, to grow share. And there's a competitive environment for countries just like com companies. Those in uh, crypto believe that that's kind of the whole point of this is that the U.S. just wants to kill crypto. Well, I think the U.S. has a lot of different people in government with different motives. Um, I, I do believe at this point that um, the SEC, you know, at least the chair, is, is trying to curtail crypto. I don't think that there's a good faith effort to regulate it. I think they're trying to curtail it. But there's lots of other people at the SEC that we interact with, which are really fine individuals. And we have very productive relationships with them. And, you know, the good news is that um, things change in the U.S. every, every four to eight years. And so um, I think one way or another, either through congressional action to make new legislation, which we've seen good progress on, um, the CFTC is asserting their authority, the courts uh, case that's playing out, or um, with new SEC chairs in the future. I think America will get to the right answer here. Um, but you know, Coinbase is going to make sure we do our part to help ensure that it happens.